Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. We welcome all of you here, those of you that may be watching. For the next few moments, I have a very special message that's very urgent that must be preached called Satan's Hidden Conspiracy to Sabotage America. My text is Matthew chapter 23, 34 through 36. Therefore, indeed, I send to you prophets, wise men, and scribes, and some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say unto you, all of these things will come upon this generation. For the next few moments, I'm going to show you something that's very urgent and important, how the United States legislatures are putting us in a position of what I call a self-curse, where we are bringing a curse upon ourselves that if not repented of, and I love what Bill preached, it's about repentance, it's about turning to God. But if we don't do that in the proper way soon, we're going to experience two things of which I will prove from the Bible. We are going to experience tsunamis of huge proportions which will affect millions of Americans, especially on the coast. And we're also going to experience what I call major trouble in our cities from an economic perspective and from a natural disaster perspective. Now, I don't want anybody to think, oh, this, here we go, some doom and gloom prophet and some kind of doom and gloom teaching. I'm going to show you the one thing that's going to get us if we don't change it in the future. We have to go back to the story of the Exodus. Moses, as you may know, lived for 120 years, and there were three cycles of 40 years in his life. 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in the desert watching sheep, and 40 years of leading the children of Israel through the wilderness toward the promised land. Now, we're told in Psalms 95 and 10 that the generation in the wilderness fell into unbelief. And because of that, they were not able to enter in, but their children did inherit the promised land. Now, according to Psalms 95 and 10, 40 years is considered a generation of unbelief. When Jesus warned Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, he did it probably in around 30, some suggest 31, 32 AD. Jerusalem was destroyed in 70, added up. It's somewhere in a 38 to 40 year period. And what was he rebuking them for? For their sin of shedding innocent blood, and for their unbelief. So it was a generation of unbelief. There's that 40 years that comes in. When God begins to sin, what we call a national judgment, it happens through different methods, but what it impacts, it impacts the land, it impacts the economy, it impacts the provisions, it impacts the, what we call the peace that should be in the country and upon the minds of the people. Now, when we talk about the things that are, we're going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about three significant laws and principles. Number one is the law of shedding innocent blood that brings, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19 and verse 13, the guilt of innocent blood upon a nation. The second thing I want to tell you is there's a spiritual principle connected to shedding innocent blood in which there's a 40-year cycle somewhere in there a 40-year cycle that one generation experiences the judgment because their cup of iniquity becomes full. And that word is found in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 16 about the iniquity of the Amorites becoming full and then God judges the nations of the pagans when their iniquity becomes full. The third thing I want to share with you is this, that the patterns of what we're going to see in the future are already found in the Bible. So if we can unlock the patterns found in the Bible, we can better understand what can absolutely happen to us in the future. Now, having said that, in Exodus chapter 1, 15 through 17, there arose a Pharaoh, and this is what the Pharaoh said. Here's the scripture that I want to give you. And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shephara, and the name of the other was Puah, and said... 
when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools because they, they, they birthed on birthing stools where the woman sat up. That's the old way of doing it. If it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men and the children, the men saved the men children alive. Now it's interesting that when you begin to study the history of this, Josephus, the Jewish historian, tells you that Pharaoh had a dream and Egypt was in one scale and the la a lamb was in the other scale and the lamb outweighed Egypt. And Janus and Jambres, according to Josephus, warned Pharaoh and said, there's going to be a, a child born to the Hebrew people that's going to conquer Egypt. And according to Josephus, this was the reason why that Pharaoh ordered the male sons to be killed because he was afraid there was a king coming among the Hebrew people that would literally defeat the Egyptian people. And you know, if you read the book of Genesis, the Egyptians hated shepherds because there was a shepherd from Arabia that for several hundred years brought his sheep up into the area where the Nile River was and just ate the grass and ate everything up with all the thousands and tens and thousands of sheep that he had. So isn't it interesting that the very animal that the Egyptians wouldn't worship and the very animal that the Egyptians hated, the lamb was the blood that defeated them. So it's a, actually, actually, as you know, the lamb is a picture of Jesus. Now, I always wanted to know what was the deal about taking the kids and throwing them into the river? And the river there, of course, would have been the Nile River. And the answer is this, that there was an idol god that the Egyptians worshipped, Hapi, which was the god of water. And he was uh, the god of fertility. So this is what was taking place. They believed that if you sacrificed to the water or you did something to sacrifice to the water god, Hapi, that somehow he would keep the water from being too low, which would affect the crops. Or he would, he would keep the water from being too high, which would affect the homes from being flooded. So I want you to understand what Pharaoh is doing. This is what you call the old, double, the, the old double header. Number one, he's gonna get rid of the boys that can produce more kids. When you don't have the seed of a man, you can't have children, so let the daughters live. Who are they gonna marry? And number two, he was going to sacrifice to the God to please him to make sure that the Nile maintained its proper rise because the Nile actually flowed out, uh, flowed through a cataract, they called it, through, which was co considered the land of the dead. So kill babies, offer it to the God Hopi in the river to th that flows to the land of the dead, and now you're going to have prosperity in the very near future. So what I want to show, show you is this. Watch carefully. The Hebrew in Pharaoh's mind, the Hebrew boys being offered was a sacrifice to an Egyptian god. Wasn't just getting rid of them. That's the primary reason. But if we're going to get rid of them, let's offer them to a god and get the blessing of our idol god upon us. Now, having said that, God's judgment was actually being set this entire time without the Egyptians even realizing it. And when Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years, we know that God is preparing a judgment. So Moses, as you know, kills an Egyptian. He flees into the wilderness and God is getting ready while Moses is in the wilderness for one generation. 40 years. God then is going to say at the end of the 40, I'm bringing the man of God back in to judge this nation after 40 years, which is one generation. Is everybody tracking with me? Say amen. amen. Now here's what's interesting because this is, this is what we call post-birth abortion. The child is born, you see the child, now let's abort the child. Now it's interesting that an infant is in its mother's womb surrounded by water. That water is there really as a form of protection to protect the child. So when, when the water breaks, that is when we know that a woman is about to give birth once the water breaks. Notice this, God saw the intent of Pharaoh. Take the child after the water breaks and it's born and throw it in water. And God said, Pharaoh, since you want to throw my people in water, 40 years from now, I'm going to put you underwater. <laughs> because the Bible says with the same judgment that you judge others, it'll be judged back to you. How did Pharaoh and his armies die? Talk to me, somebody. They were drowned in the Red Sea waters. So this is what God did. Now, let me just go through this very quickly because what I want to show you now is a parallel between the days of Moses and the Pharaoh of Egypt and the days that we're living in 
and the politicians and leaders in Washington, D.C., and even some of our state leaders in certain states. So watch carefully. Moses lived for 80 years, and then he came back into the, to Egypt where the judgment started. This is what you read in Exodus chapter 1 and 8. And Bill Cloud and I have dealt with this years ago when we had a former president in office. It says this in, in Exodus 1 8. So for there arose a new king or a new Pharaoh among them who knew not Joseph. Now, we began to teach that there was coming a leader in America that, and it happens, has happened already, that would not have the Bible foundation that all of our forefathers have had and that he would make decisions contrary to the Bible, not being aware of what the scriptures actually taught. May I tell you that we have new people in Washington, D.C. who know, not only do not know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they know nothing about the God of Christianity. So there's just like, just like in this time, now put the two together, that a new Pharaoh arises who doesn't know Joseph, and his decree is against infants, to have infants killed after they are born. We now have leaders in D.C. who do not know, have, first of all, have no respect for Israel as a nation, no respect for the covenants that God has established in the Bible, and absolutely know nothing about what the Bible teaches about shedding innocent blood. So what they're doing now is they are now beginning to pass laws in which after a child has already been born, if you determine that you do not want the baby, you inject it and it will die shortly after its birth. I cannot imagine us coming to this point because that is heathenism, it's paganism, it's ungodly. And anyone who puts their name Christian behind something of that will not only stand before God to be judged, but will end up in hell when it's all said and done. Because you are a murderer who is willfully shedding innocent blood. See, in the Old Testament, the word judge, one of the words for judge is the Hebrew word din. Now check this out, Bill. I'll teach you something here. <laughs> if you go into Matthew 24 and verse 8, and it says, when the signs begin to happen, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Sorrows is the 1611 English word for birth pains. All of your newer translations translate it properly, saying these are the beginning of the birth pains. But the Greek word birth pains is odin. So here we have a connection from a Hebrew word, which is judge, and a Greek word, which has the same, if we say it in English, translating it to English, the word din in it. And I think that that, that it really implies something to me, that when there is a birthing pain in a woman, there has to be a breaking of water. And once that water begins to break, that's when you know the child is coming. And an abortion has to go in and break that water and pull that child out. So here's what I want to say to you, and I want to say this. I'm standing here at OCI at this year at a prophetic summit to make a prediction I am not afraid of. Because one day you will go back to this DVD and some of you will go back to this television program and you will say Perry Stone said it on a Sunday morning, the last night of the prophetic summit. I am here to announce to you that unless there is true repentance, unless the corporations in America quit supporting pro-abortion mills, unless the American people and their politicians begin to understand that life is sacred from the beginning, we will experience a judgment of water in the United States of America. Now, I'm going to be careful with this because I have been on a, a dear friend of mine's program from Branson, Missouri, and we've discussed this in detail, and some of you may have seen that. But I believe that when we breach the water and the water breaks in order to pull a child out, God's judgment with the same judgment you judge is judged back to you. So the judgment God will use against those who shed innocent blood and legalize it will be a judgment using water. The water will come through two methods. It will come through extreme flooding in which flood waters will destroy cities, towns, and land. But it will also come, and I'm very careful saying this, but it will also come through tsunamis. I have seen in the spirit, in fact, I went, through a, I went through a time where for three years, every two to three weeks, 
It was the same dream from a different view. I was up in the air. I was down on the ground. I was at the ocean. I was on the edge of the ocean. I was up uh, in, in, in mountains. And I would see tsunamis that were so bad. And it was all the United States. It wasn't a foreign country. That one of them, and I, I don't even want to name the state, but it's it, because people will call me and should I move, should I do this? No, you better listen to God. You better learn to pray and listen to God is what you better do. And teach people how to turn to Him. But I saw this and they, it was an ocean and they were surfing and I, we were screaming, get out of the water, get out. I saw the wave coming way behind them. Nobody paid attention. They laughed, they mocked. And all of a sudden the wave came in and the next picture, just like a movie, was people in mud whose hands were sticking out where they had tried to cross. Thousands of people on a beach lying in mud. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand it is not God that wants to do this. God is not in the business to say, well, I don't like you, so I'm going to get rid of you. I read where he's merciful. I read where he's kind. He even won't even destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if he can find 10 people because Abraham interceded and knew that Lot and the family was there. God wants to be merciful, but at the same time, he cannot allow us to break laws that ancient nations broke and were judged for breaking. So therefore, at some point, if we don't turn to him, we have to experience the same thing. God cannot, it would be unjust, because it says on the judgment day, the men of Sodom will stand up and look at the men of Jesus' day and condemn them for not believing. For, now think about this. Jesus said, for had they seen, had the men of Sodom seen the miracles that you're seeing, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. Can you imagine that? So we're coming to a point where the American people are either going to turn to God and understand the times and the dangers that we're in, or they're going to do what ancient Israel did and harden their heart. This is the danger if you harden your heart. Now someone said, well, how do you think this can happen? Recently there was a report that came from a place called the Canary Islands. You see where the Canary, Island is, look, Canary Islands are. Now this is an a active volcano. This is a volcanic island. Now, recently in Indonesia, a volcano broke off and part of it fell into the water and it created a tsunami. Now, I'm not saying this as a minister. They're saying this as researchers and scientists, that it's very possible the Canary Islands will blow in the very near future. If it goes a certain way and breaks a certain way, it will send a wave to the east coast of the United States that would be between 50, this, um, these are what people are saying, to could be 100 feet tall. 100 feet tall would come into the east coast of the United States. Now, I'm very careful saying this. I don't even like to talk about these things. I used to tell this stuff in private to friends of mine. But I have seen an east coast tsunami. I have seen it so many times that I can't even, I can't even, I can't even describe it to you uh, because it would take so long because of the detail that I have seen. I believe that God has held off the judgment of water, listen carefully, to see what his people are going to do. But here's where we've come to. Abortion has been legal since 1973. It's the shedding of innocent blood according to your Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 23 to Israel, I am going to allow, God is going to allow you to experience judgment and destruction because all the blood from Abel to Zacharias, whom you slew between the porch and the altar, is going to come on one generation. Do you all understand? That's 3,000 years? 3,500 years of, of shedding innocent blood comes on one generation. Now, God is giving us a chance to repent, but what scares me is what I saw recently in the Northeast where they passed a law, and many people celebrated it, that a child could be born. Now, this is what Pharaoh did. Are you paying attention? Let the child be born in the birthing stool. Then take the child and sacrifice it into the Nile River. Oh, they're not going to sacrifice the child. The mother may look at it and say, well, it has a little birth defect. Its arm is deformed. Its little leg is deformed. Maybe it's not totally what it should be or what we expected. So then a doctor can choose to come in and take that child's life. We have become pagans when we get to the point of looking at an infant 
How many infants have been born for hundreds of years with birth defects who were leaders, who ended up great musicians, who ended up as football players? There's a deaf football player. He can't even hear, but he plays football. I'm telling you that when God gives life, he has a purpose for every child that's born. And oh, listen to it. Please hear the word of the Lord. Now, please remember this that in Lot's day, the judgment was with fire, but in Noah's day, talk to me somebody, the judgment was with water. So God said, I'll not destroy the earth with water again. But listen to Luke 21, 25. He said, there, Jesus is talking. He said, there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, upon the earth, distress of nation with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts felling them for fear of what's to come and pass on the earth. The sea and the waves roaring intrigued me because when the Indonesian tsunami hit years ago, they described a roaring sound. That's the exact words from survivors. A roaring sound coming from the ocean inland. And so when you hear this of tsunamis, it always is preceded by the sound of a very, very strange roar coming from the waters. So when Jesus said sea and the waves roaring, he didn't use a modern term tsunami. That's a term that was developed later. But he told you what was going to take place prior to, <clears throat> prior to his return. So what I want to share with you <clears throat> before we get deeper into this is I want to share with you that because of the, uh, we are shedding innocent blood and we have done so for many, many years and now we're even doing it in a more horrible manner. It was horrible to begin with, but it's even more horrible now. Then there will be, unless there's repentance, a judgment that's coming. Now, what you want to understand today, and this is where we're going, is I want you to understand that Satan is using this as a conspiracy to defeat and destroy America. Watch carefully. Balaam found out you cannot curse what God has blessed. So when Balaam tried to curse Israel, he couldn't do it. See, America has been blessed because of the number of believers who widows, and we help the widows, the poor and the needy, we feed people, so we're blessed. But how did Satan defeat Israel? He said to the king of Moab, get the women to commit fornication with the young men in their tents. And what will happen is God will become angry and I can't curse them, but their God will be angry and judge them. It's called the Balaam strategy. The enemy knows we're a blessed country, but he also knows the laws of God that shedding innocent blood brings a judgment according to the Old Testament and the words of Jesus in Matthew 23. So he knows if he can get us to pass laws that will eventually cause God's disfavor to come on the nation, then God has no choice but to allow a judgment to come in a repetitive pattern the way he did in ancient Israel because we are not listening and it's called a self-curse. Somebody say a self-curse. If you want to hear the latest word on the last days, I'm now offering you prophetic messages by five different speakers from our recent International Prophetic Summit. My first message was Pax Americana, America's Roman disease. I want you to hear the stunning parallels as America enters its third phase, similar to the ancient Roman empire and how the mass immigration that came into Rome caused the fall of the empire in the same way that it could bring America to its knees economically and socially. Also, I'm going to expose this new socialist agenda. In my message, The Rapture, God's Reward for the Overcomers, I want to explain the history of the rapture teaching using Greek word studies and answer the critics who don't believe this will ever occur. I will give you numerous overlooked words and verses that prove the great catching away is for the faithful and for the overcomers, and it's God's reward to separate His covenant people from the wrath to come. My third message was the most requested, who will be left behind at Christ's return? I'm going to go to Luke 17, also in Matthew, and show you that the Greek word taken refers to those taken at the rapture. I will answer these questions. Will carnal Christians be left behind? What happens to the fetus inside of a Christian woman at the moment of the rapture? And I delve into a very controversial question. What will happen to the pets of Christians at the coming of the Lord? The fourth message is an expose on Satan's hidden conspiracy to sabotage America. I want you to hear this and how if we don't turn and repent, tsunami judgments are coming to the coastal cities of America. I want you to hear Jonathan Kahn's prophetic update. I want you to hear Mark Bilt's messages on the prophetic profile of Solomon, how artificial intelligence will impact you. 
Bill Cloud spoke on the war on the hill, living stones, God's witness of the last days and the mystery of lawlessness. And Joel Richardson topped it off with prophetic developments on Mount Sinai in Arabia and don't be a Nimrod. Now these messages from our International Prophetic Summit are now available. If you would like them on DVD, which includes the message in the pictures, or you can order them on CD, which is the message only. The CDs are for a donation of $70 or more. The DVDs are for a $110 or more donation. And the CD offer number is 19 PS CD, and the DVD offer number is 19 PS DVD. Order online right now at perrystone.org, or you can call toll-free 1-888-21-GRED. That's 1-888-212-7323. Or write me at Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and enclose the offer number and the amount. I want to warn you in advance, these messages are for truth lovers and meat eaters only, and they are the unedited versions. Looking forward to hearing from you. This could be, we're not sure yet what we're going to do, but this could be the last week that you are able to get the DVDs and CDs of the Prophetic uh, Summit. And this Satan's Hidden Conspiracy, and I want to warn you, this is a very hard-hitting, to the point, blunt message. And uh, you know, sometimes people get offended when they hear a message. Well, we can't help that. The truth sets people free if they'll listen to it. So I'm giving you advance warning on this one. When you go into the unedited version, it's very, very hard hitting. And uh, you know, people get offended at all kinds of things now, but you need to let the word set you free. So please get that in case this is the last week. We're not sure it is that you'll have the opportunity to get that. Well, guess what? Uh, we're in the month of June, and that means one thing. Perry Stone has turned 60 years of age, June 23rd, born in 1959. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't seem real. I want to just tell you what a minister told me many years ago. I was a young preacher, uh, probably about 18, and I was in a rural church in West Virginia, and this minister sat me down. He was, about, he was near retirement. He said, son, I want to tell you something. You're a young man. You have a whole ministry in front of you, and your life is before you. But there will be a moment when you will blink your eyes and open them and you'll be an old man like I am. Now, I'm not saying 60 is an old man, don't get me wrong. 60 is young, 60 is young. But you know, it's so true because I've been ministering over 40 years. Uh, if I go from the time I was called to preach, it's 42 years. And you know, I think about this and it seems like a long time because in my memory, if I go back to Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, the early states, uh, it's been a long time. But then I, th I say to myself, where has time gone? Now, I want you to know something, especially those of you that partner with our ministry, that we are intent on seeing God do more in the end, I call it the third phase, than the first two phases of our ministry because it's 20 years, 20 years, 20 years. We kind of divide things up that way. And it should, should the Lord tarry, I, I thank you for praying for us. Many of you have prayed for us for years. I thank you that are partners of our ministry um, and you hope you enjoy the website, partners website and the nuggets from Israel and all the stuff that we give you every single week on, uh, through the partner ministry. But partners, thank you because you help keep manifest on the air around the world. Uh, there's some great Christian networks out there. Some of them you're watching right now. Sometimes we're on secular networks as well. But our goal is to reach as many people as we can in the period of time that we have. Now, do not forget, <clears throat> Warrior Fest is coming up in July. And also, the great, great Utah meeting is coming up. We hope to see many of you there that we've never met before. God bless you. Till next week. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2019 Israel tour. The dates are November 25th through December 4th with an optional visit to Petra in the country of Jordan. Call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org for more information and how to register. Seating is limited, so call today.